If you're like me, you have destroyed more than one of these sensors, especially if you're running methanol. But maybe there's a solution? Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a little over a week since I put a video up. Things have been busy. Uh, I've had family visiting from out of town, things like that. And honestly, I've got some new equipment coming, so there's going to be some changes around the garage. And because of that, the tuning series is kind of on hiatus for a couple more days. Once I get the rest of the equipment in, you're going to see some changes. You're going to see higher quality video for you guys. Uh, you know, maybe clear up some things and just an all around better presentation for you, the viewer. So uh, stick around. There's more tuning videos coming. There's additional other videos coming uh, as far as we're going to try some some uh, create your own data logger stuff, some other neat stuff, hack the lens bus, other things like that. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And, and you know, if you want to click the bell in the corner and that way you get notifications whenever new videos come out because there's going to be a lot of content coming here soon. But if you uh, don't have anything to do with IAT sensors, if you don't have the issue of, of killing these things every couple of weeks like I do, I'll leave you a link in the corner uh, that takes you over to the playlist for the tuning session. You can catch up on those in the meantime. But for now, let's talk about this. This is your standard GM style intake air temp sensor. This is what I run on my truck. I kill these things about every, uh, I don't know, maybe thousand miles, I would say. And the reason behind that is, is that I have methanol injection to make up for the lack of fueling on the direct injected engines. The big caveat being is that this has to be downstream of the methanol injection so it can see the air temperature change. Whenever you inject methanol or a methanol water blend into the intake track, it flash cools the temperature on there and to the point of where my intake track is often below uh, ambient temperature even though it's downstream of the supercharger, which should be a lot hotter. That's the, one of the biggest benefits of methanol injection. It creates a denser air charge. But these things are not very reliable or uh, resilient whenever it comes to methanol injection. So my thought was, what would happen if I were to take a coolant temp sensor and put it in the intake track? Well, this poses a couple problems. One, the scaling is wrong on this. So this has a scale chart that you can edit in HP tuners. That's a good thing because we can go in, find a scale chart from this, and verify it, and then change the scale chart for that to this. Now, the other inherent problem is going to be reaction time. This is designed to react very, very fast in the intake track. If this has a slower reaction time, it can cause issues because that air intake sensor is part of your dynamic air or speed density calculation. So I thought, why not test both out? We'll go ahead and get up to the operating temperature. We'll look at what the intake temperature is with this, and then I will force my methanol injection at idle to spray for, say, three seconds, and we will see the temperature shift. So if we see a 20-degree temperature shift from three seconds of methanol injection with this sensor, we want to replicate that with this sensor. And so we will kind of put a limited window on there where we can compare the two to see if this thing will react as quick as this one does. Okay, I have a sneaking suspicion here that we're not getting enough airflow to suck the methanol across the sensor at idle, so I'm gonna hold this thing up to uh, maybe 2,000 RPMs if I can, and then inject it and see if that makes a difference. It may not like it because it's gonna go pretty rich. It was about five seconds didn't seem to make a difference did not shift the needle that was with the engine coolant temp let's go back and put the intake air temp in and try it in the same way okay let's try this again now we've got the uh, intake air temp sensor in I'm going to hold this thing to 2,000 we'll see where the temp is at it's going up that's a good sign One, two, three, four, five, 
Okay, there's the there's the difference we're looking for. Did you see how quick that thing dropped down to 79 while we were injecting? That the proof is in the pudding, man. It just looks like it's not going to work with the coolant temp sensor. So let's jump back over and, and talk about this some more. Well, it's just as I had worried. Honestly, the reaction time on the engine coolant temp just is not quite fast enough. As you saw on the video, uh, whenever we were using the standard IAT, there was a pretty quick shift. Uh, I'm going to cut down all that. You're only going to see the actual tests that work. I did six different tests, seven different tests on this thing. The one that I actually put in this video is the only one where you could actually see deflection on the IAT sensor. You didn't see any on the engine coolant temp. There is actually some methanol water blend on this sensor. So, you know, the plugs are a little bit different. You can get this plugged in pretty easily. You just jam her on there and it seemed to work. It was reading right. The scaling's right. I just don't know why you'd want to use it because using this would probably be dangerous because it would not react fast enough for your dynamic airflow uh, tune. So for now, it looks like we're stuck with the IAT sensors. If you have any suggestions on what I can do to not kill these things with methanol injection, post them down in the comments below. But for now, I guess I'll just keep on buying these cheap things. They're about six, seven bucks a pop. So it's not the end of the world and consider them a must replace item every couple thousand miles. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As I said, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. There's going to be some more awesome comment or content coming up here soon. And uh, leave your comments below. Any suggestions once again. Or, uh, and if you like the video, throw me a thumbs up. But as usual, thanks for stopping by the garage. And remember, always be tuning.